Today it's time to learn the ropes of Dragon Ball Fighter Z. Let's talk about all the basic mechanics, all the abilities that every character has, let's talk about the control schemes. Welcome to Dragon Ball Fighter Z 101. We'll be using the Xbox controller for this video, but the control scheme should be the same for PlayStation 4. Just put the controllers right next to each other and the buttons should translate really easily. So let's start by looking at the HUD. Up top, we have all the health bars for your characters. As you take damage, the bar lowers, when it's empty, your character is down. Basic stuff. At the bottom of the screen you have your meter. This is what you use to perform some abilities in the game like teleport or the super moves, which we'll talk about more in a little bit. This being a fighting game, the first thing we want to know is how do you punch and kick? You use the face buttons to do that. There's a weak, medium and strong attack buttons and then there's the special attack button which is how your characters throw those weak fireballs. To do basic combos you can simply mash the attack buttons. Each one will have a different variant and if you finish with a strong attack you can either knock your opponent into the air or into the edge of the screen at which point he will bounce back and this is what is known as a wall bounce. This is a good opportunity to tell you about the right trigger which is how you do the super dash. By simply pressing the right trigger your character will dash towards the opponent. And from there, you can follow up in any way you want, assuming the opponent isn't blocking. Which is why, if you do it after a wall bounce, you can catch your opponent still vulnerable and juggle him in the air. But what if instead of doing the juggling, the juggling is being done to you? Well, there is an ability that will allow you to escape a juggle, but it requires precise timing. Just like the Guilty Gear games, by pressing the face buttons with precise timing, your character will recover in mid-air and gain a couple of frames of invincibility. But like every fighting game, there needs to be a grab ability, something to counter an opponent that's always blocking your attacks. Well, Dragon Ball Fighter Z has a different version of the grab, and it's called the Dragon Rush. You press the right bumper and your character will hit their opponent a bunch, launching them into the air. After that, you have full control of your character again, meaning you can juggle your opponent in the air. The way to block this ability is to perform a Dragon Rush at the same time. If the two characters do it, they will clash and reset to their neutral state. So we've talked about the face buttons, the right trigger, the right bumper. All that's left in terms of basic controls are the left trigger and the left bumper. Well, those are the dedicated assist buttons. Dragon Ball Fighter Z is a 3v3 fighting game. So while attacking you'll be able to press the left bumper or the left trigger to call in your assist characters. If you press them both, they will both come out at the same time. They'll come into the fight, do an attack and then go on cooldown. You can see how long that assist cooldown takes by checking out their portraits right next to the health bar. But to do this, you need to either be in a neutral position or you need to be attacking. If you're down, if you're blocking, if you're stunned in a combo, you can't call in your assists. The same rules apply for changing characters. To do this, you use the same buttons, but instead of pressing them, you hold them down. The character you switch to will come flying in using a super dash that we just talked about. If you switch characters in the middle of a super attack, the new character will come in and do a super move of their own. That is, of course, if you have enough bars of meter to pull that off. But switching characters does have more uses than offensive combos. You'll notice, as your character takes damage, that there's a blue bar left on your health gauge. If you swap out a character that has taken damage recently, they will heal up that blue bar over time. So being smart on when you swap can win or lose you a game. There is, however, another way to recover health without swapping your character, and that's using Sparking Blast. Sparking Blast can only be used once per fight, it's represented by the lightning icon under the HP bar. There are many uses for the Sparking Blast. When you activate it, you start healing your blue bar. But you can also use this as a combo extender because it cancels any combo that you're in. But, but of course to do that, you would need to be a more advanced player and you would probably know about this already. You can also throw your opponent off balance by activating it defensively as it will grant you a small period of invulnerability. While Sparking Blast is activated, your character will gain an aura and will deal increased damage for a short period of time. And at this point, you're probably wondering, I thought we were gonna talk about teleports at some point. Well, you made it to that point. Let's talk about everything that has to do with the meter down there. So the meter fills up rather quickly while you're dealing damage, and even more while you're taking damage. And it only goes up to a maximum of 7 bars, so it is encouraging you to use it very often. 
Fortunately, there are a lot of ways to do just that. One of the ways is by using teleport. You can teleport pretty much at any time. Use this to extend your combos, to surprise your opponent with a quick attack. There's a lot of ways to use it, but it only works offensively. None of that Naruto substitution stuff. You can also spend that meter by using super moves. Every character has an array of super and special moves. The special moves don't spend any meter, but the supers do. And they can range from spending a single bar up to five full bars. You can also spend meter by uh, using transformations. So far, only Frieza has a transformation and it spends three bars of meter, making him stronger, but when it runs out, he's left vulnerable for a short period of time. And finally, even though the meter charges relatively fast, you can also charge it manually by using the key charge. Hold down A and X at the same time, and you will charge your key faster and faster as time goes. If you simply tap those two buttons, your character will still recharge a quarter of a meter, which can still be a pretty long animation in a fast-paced fighting game such as this. If you must absolutely use a key charge, make sure you have assist characters available to protect you. And that's all the basics, there are some more advanced techniques that every character has, stuff like push block, EX moves, air dashes, wake up supers, that's stuff that you should really get your hands on the game. First get comfortable, then dive into those deeper mechanics. I want to give a big shout out to Rao, the creator of the DBFZ subreddit, who compiled a lot of this information in a single post over there. If you want to join an awesome community that's excited for this game, do check out that subreddit, because it's pretty damn awesome. In the meantime, you guys can hang around here with us, because we're also excited about this game. Proof of that, this video right here, that shows you the 24 character roster that I think will be in the game. Why 24 characters? Click to find out. If you're in the mood for something else, click this video right here, but as always, my name's Globku, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Boy!